What's up everybody, this is Ruben with Tools of Freedom and today I will be testing if barrel length really affects per the performance of 9mm. Let's check it out. I'll be using a Glock 26 chambered 9mm. Uh, this gun is awesome. It's perfect for concealed carry as a 3.4 inch barrel. For the full frame but smaller barrel, I'll be using a Walther PPX. I love this gun, it has a threaded barrel so it's ready for a can whenever I want it. For a full size, with a longer barrel, I'll be using a Beretta 92FS with a 4.9 inch barrel. And for a carbine length, I'll be using a kel Sub 2000, chambered in 9mm. I love this gun. This gun is awesome. You can throw it in a backpack. Uh, has a Picatinny rail up on top and on the bottom. I have a flashlight on it, uh, red dot on it. And you can fold this in half, throw it in a backpack like I said. But right now, I'm not able to do that since I got an optic on it. So the ammo I'll be using is Federal 115 grain full metal jacket. On the box it says it's rated for 1125 feet per second. Today I'll be using my chronograph to test that on the different barrels. And we're gonna test its performance also. For one of the tests I'll be doing is a water jug test. I'll be using five jugs for each of the weapons except for the Walther since it has a very similar barrel to the Beretta. I'll also be doing a paper plate test and a cantaloupe test and a center block test. So this is gonna be really fun, let's check it out. I'll be using the chronograph and I'll be firing five shots with every weapon and we're gonna get an average to see the performance of each barrel length. So the first one is gonna be the Glock. I'll be shooting from seven yards from all weapons. Got 115 grain full metal jackets. Here we go. Seven yards. 1,304. 1,271. 1,282. 1,303. 1,279. Next is the Walther PPX, same thing. 9 millimeter full metal jacket, 115 grain. Let's see how this one shoots. Seven yards again. 1,287. 1,264. 1,283, 1,294, 1,283. Now I'll be testing the Beretta, same thing, 9 millimeter, 150 grain, full metal jacket. Two hundred ninety-nine. Something's got to be wrong with this ammo. I've been getting this. Over and over and over. 313. 293. 337. 227. That's it. Maybe it is the gun. Maybe it's the ammo. I'm going to test that right now. Now, let's do the Caltech Sub 2000. If we get funky numbers again, it's definitely the ammunition. Here we go. Nine hundred and twenty-seven. One thousand two hundred and sixty-seven. One thousand three hundred and thirty-two. 1,399, 1,409. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what to tell you about the Beretta. I don't know if it's the ammunition or the gun, maybe it's both, but I was getting really low numbers with the Beretta. I don't know, it's all the same ammunition. Maybe it's weak loaded, I don't know, but that's what we're gonna go with. Take it with a grain of salt. So now I'll be shooting the water jugs. The first one up is a Glock 26. We got five jugs. Here we go. All 
So we're gonna check the damage. We got jug number one, busted. Number two, busted. Number three, busted. Number four, busted. Number five, came in and came out. So Glock 26 went through all five jugs. I brought out 15 jugs, so I'll be doing five jugs for each weapon. So if the Glock 26 was able to do that, well now we know that the rest are probably gonna do the same. But we can definitely see, but jug number five, it does have two holes, but there's still a lot of water in it. So it had way less force compared to the other jugs. Here we go, five more jugs. Next one up is a Welter PPX. Let me line them up really good. All right. Point blank again. Oh, that's definitely a lot more force. We got jug number one, busted. Jug number two, fully busted. Look at that hole in that. Jug number three, busted. Wow. Okay, so that's probably one of the weaker loads. I'm pretty sure that's the ammo because jug number four and number five are unscathed. That is surprising. But I am sure it's the ammunition we're using. It's just weak loaded. Yep, that's federal for you. Next up is a Caltech Sub 2000. Round and chamber. Point blank. Let's see what we get. Woo! That was fun. That shot, <laughs> it got me all wet. Let's check out the damage from the Keltec Sub 2000. I'm assuming this is number two. Little cap came off, but then we have another one under the table over here. So this is one. This is completely busted. One, two, three, four, and Nothing with five, do we, do we catch a round? No, I don't think so. Let's see, there's a piece of jacket right there. Yeah, it looks like that, that round went off the side. Can't get this to open. Let's dump it anyways. We got a total of three unharmed jugs. Let's see what, what else we can do with these. Maybe for our next video. Now I'll be doing the cinder block test, the Glock 26. Point blank range. Here we go. Let's make sure round, no round, round a chamber. Straight through. All right. Went clean through right there. Nice hole. That's all we get. Just that one hole. Did not even touch the back. All right. Let's move on to the next weapon. Now we're gonna be doing the Beretta. Same thing, same ammo. Point blank range. Let's see what happens. Round and chamber. All right. Let's look at the damage. Came in through here. We're you reusing these blocks. Nothing on this side. And nothing on this other side. So all these nine millimeters are only going through one side of the concrete blocks. These center blocks right here. Have not caught any of the rounds yet. Actually here, let me take a look. Nothing. Let's take a look here on the table. Nothing. No idea where all these rounds are going to. 
All right, Celtics up 2,000. Fresh block on the front, used block on the back, but with a clean side. Now we're going with a Celtic sub 2000. I don't think this is going to punch through both sides, but that's what we're here for to test it. Celtic sub 2000, same ammo. Let's load up, round and chamber. Point blank range. We hit right here. Came out on the back. Still untouched. None of these nine millimeter rounds went through both sides of the, of the center block. Kind of disappointed. I thought that at least maybe, you know, crack it. But nope, they don't even hit. They don't even hit the other side. Other sides are clean. All right, moving on to the next test. Next one is gonna be the paper plate test. Got the Glock 26, I got 300 paper plates. Let's see what we get. Point blank range again. Round and chamber. All right, straight through. Same thing. Now it's gonna be the PPX. Same rounds. Same story. All right, I'm hitting exactly where I'm aiming at. Now it's gonna be the Beretta. One round, same ammunition. Let's load up. Point blank range. I hit a little bit low, but it was still a good shot. And next up, with the Celtic Sub 2000, loaded with one round, same ammunition, round in the chamber, point blank range. I was right next to it. Right next to it. I think I'm gonna be uh, shooting another one. That was too close. That was too close. Take two, point blank range. Oh, I'm hitting the same spot. My point of aim with this uh, Keltex Sub 2000, haven't learned it too well. All right, let's take a look at the damage. Let's see what we got. So we have all shots right here. This right here is the uh, Glock, this is the PPX, this is the Beretta, and these two are the uh, Celtics Sub 2000. So we're gonna look at the back. Oh, oh, looks like I, I should have used more plates. All rounds come through the back. Jesus. Now I'll be doing the cantaloupe test. Same thing, Glock 26. Same ammunition. Let's load up, round and chamber. Let's see from point blank range. Oh, I hit the top. It was not a clean, clean round. Okay, kind of. Let's see, this is what we got. I think I can better shot though. Let's compromise, it's already shot. We're gonna shoot it again anyways. I'm gonna put it right here again. Let's load up another round. One more time. Just for good measure. Same thing, point blank range. Load it up. That's in the center, that's better. These nasty things. So this is the first shot up on the top, second shot in the middle. These are both the exit wounds with the Glock 26. Nobody likes these damn things. Ugh, it's nasty. Let's put up another one. All right.
Next up is the Walter PPX, same ammunition. Let's load up. Round and chamber from point blank range. All right. That's better. Right in the center. Let's take a look at this. Entry wound, exit wound. That's what I'm talking about. Smells pretty good actually. But I don't like the taste. Let's put up another one. Let's see what happens. Next up is gonna be the Beretta. Once again, Beretta, same ammunition. Let's load up. Ooh, what happened to that? I wanna see that. That was interesting. That was definitely interesting. So here is the entry wound. This is the exit wound. This is looking better. The Beretta shot that better. I like it. Look at that big wound right there. Entry, exit. Caltex up 2000. One round. Let's load up. Oh, that's interesting. I like this one too. So entry wound right there and exit wound. Pretty nasty. I think we can safely say that the barrel length on a nine millimeter doesn't matter that much. Maybe a little bit, but on the test we performed today, we have similar performance across the board, except for the Beretta. I think it was the, the ammunition that was a little low, uh, weak on that, but that's what it is. Take that with a grain of salt. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next time.